welcome back to part two of this advanced cleanup series. My name is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects. Now in the first part of this series, we went into InPaint and did the lion's share of the work to remove the type from this t-shirt. We're now only left with a little bit of cleanup plus some letters right down at the bottom. And that's what we're gonna be preparing for in this section because we have to find a way of excluding the objects that go in front of where we actually want to be doing the painting. And here, that is going to be the helmet. In this exercise, we're gonna try and find the fastest way of dealing with that. And that is going to be a combination of procedural keying plus a bit of assisted roto. So join me as we head back into our shop. Right, well, welcome back into the shot. Uh, in this section, we are going to be looking at creating up an alpha channel for the helmet down here. And I'm gonna introduce you to a concept of mine called Ben's Hierarchy of Speed. And this is a little checklist I go through in my head about what tool is going to be best to use for a specific job. Now, wherever possible, I want to avoid having to do manual work. So if I don't need to do manual roto on this helmet, then I'm not gonna be doing manual roto on that helmet. Thank you very much. Anything that I can do procedurally without having to go into the manual tool set, I'm gonna to try to do that first. And essentially what that means with creating an alpha channel here is that instead of going straight for the roto node, I'm gonna add in a keyer of some sort. Now, if I come into my nodes and have a look at the key section, we have a few different tools available to us, but the main keyer is going to be ZMAT. I'll just bring that into my node tree and I'll pipe that in from the input. Good, so if we take a look at the ZMAT parameters, we can extract on you know, blue screen, green screen, luminance hue. So we could take out the red hue maybe let's have a little look i'll turn my alpha on here maybe hit a again just to to show us the uh, the black and white map and let's see what we can get so this would definitely let's move that there and this definitely makes a nice contrast between the helmet and the t-shirt unfortunately a lot of the text is going to be included in our mat as well which is which is no good we can't use that so i am going to just plump straight for a luminance map. I'm going to take my position down to zero so that it's looking mainly for the, the shadows and try and find the, the balance now with the range. Let's reset the black and white clip and let's adjust that in there so we've got good contrast happening. Now this is easy to, uh, to, to pull a really good key right at the start. The trouble comes towards the end where we have, let's just show you the uh, foreground here. Yeah, the problem comes towards the end where we have these deep shadows coming in. Uh, we want to make sure those are clean as well. I hit A to cycle through my alpha overlay. And at some point I'm just gonna say, all right, you've beaten me, uh, congratulations. Uh, let's see what we can we can pull out here. So. I'm going to come to my last good frame where the helmet is looking, you know, pretty, pretty swish, which is around about here. I'll keyframe up the range, the black clip and the white clip, and then move us over to where the shadows are coming in and see if I can just pull in anything there. So maybe even just reducing the range a little bit and clipping us up. I know we're going to have issues there, but we might be all right. Maybe if we blur that out a little bit. Let's hit A again to come back, to sort of cycle through. And let's come to the end frame. Let's see if we can bring in some more of the, that detail there without, without hurting ourselves too much. This might be all right. This might be all right. Okay, so the helmet's looking pretty good. I'm fine with the helmet, but we're going to have to do a little bit of manual roto just to hold out some of the some of the areas on the shirt and maybe just fill in some of the gaps as well. Let's make this look a little bit neater. 
one of my favorite little quality of life things that's come up in the uh, the last few versions is the ability to add in dot nodes. So if I hold Alt down, I can just add in a dot node in between two connectors. If I hold down Alt again, I can connect from that dot node into other places. So I can sort of just try and make this look, look a little bit neater there. And I want a couple of roto nodes coming in to the uh, the Z mat. One that's going to help with the holdout mat. So that's going to fill in the areas of the helmet that I wasn't able to fill in myself. And the other one is going to be the garbage mat, which is going to take out areas that I, I don't want in at all. So that's going to be things like all of this. Hang on, let's show us here. Yeah, all of this area of the shirt and the hair as well. So just quick garbage mat stuff. I could steal this roto node, I suppose. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm just going to shake it free, bring it above there, and it's all clicked. Add in another dot node and just pipe that in there. So we're keeping us looking a little bit nicer. We'll probably move this over here and, and sort that out soon anyway. So this roto node, I'm going to have this as my garbage mask. And I'm going to use that just to take out this area here. In my hierarchy of speed, above all else is recycle what you've got. So any data that we've created for something else like tracking data, roto data, whatever it is, if we can reuse that and recycle it, then let's do it. Because there's no point in coming in and, and redoing work we've already done. So I'm going to come into my inpaint over here. And remember how I said that the inpaint tools were the same as the Roto tools. Well, it goes so far that I can copy happily between Roto and InPaint in either direction. So I can copy or Control-C, Command-C my layer over here. It's coming to my garbage mask. And I can paste either with Edit Paste or Control or Command-V. And I'm going to get rid of all of these shapes because I don't want any of those shapes at all. What I do want is this sweet, sweet tracking data that I have on my layer. If I turn my overlay on, let's play that back. Remember, I've got all of that lovely tracking data in there, and that's gonna be worth gold. So I'm gonna view my ZMAT node just to see exactly what I need to take out, and I'm gonna make some big rough shapes. Go around here. I don't really care too much about what is happening up at the top because we're never gonna be painting in there anyway, so that's fine. But let's just see if this is going to work for us. Just need to make sure that this shape at the bottom doesn't go across this part of the uh, the helmet. It does right from the very start. That's bad. That's fine. I'll just bring that over there. I don't think it's. I don't think it's going to do any anything bad there. Lovely. All right. What else did we have that we needed to garbage mask out? Well, we needed this area of the shirt as well, didn't we? Uh, I could probably handle this with one shape. I'll try and keep these shapes as, as simple as possible. Okay, so let's just bring that up there. Moves forward. Let's um, stabilize the viewer, shall we? So we're not chasing our tails again. And um, I'm going to just actually use one of my favorite tools which is the brush reshape tool. I'll just use the control or command key and just drag to make that a little bit bigger and just, yeah, fit that into place. That's gonna come around about there and that should get us where we need to go. Let's see, just make sure that it doesn't cross that that little um, strap area for the, uh, for the helmet because that's something we do absolutely want to keep in. That should be fine. Yeah, it's just garbage masks, doesn't have to be beautiful let's see if that takes in everything ah, there's a little bit there as well um what can we do with that well i don't want to redo anything else i'm just going to be efficient which is another word for lazy and just add another little shape in there just to cover the whole thing perfect all right good let's see how that works uh piping that in to the garbage mask there so boom boom Let's have a little look, see if we're missing anything. Little area there. 
Let's add in another shape. It's not doing anything back there that's going to cause us trouble. And in here, we'll just reshape that. There we go. Fast, loose. That's how we play it. Okay, that's good on the main shirt. Only other thing over on the left hand side of the shirt, we want to make sure that we, we keep these creases as well. Once we do it properly. So we've got a garbage mask to take all the stuff out that we don't want. Now we need the holdout mat to keep in the stuff that we actually do want. So I'm going to add another roto node in. Let's just bring that into the into the tree. Alt to create my little dot to feed that into there. And let's uh, feed that into my Z mat. View that node and still be working on editing that node. Okay, and this one is going to be my hold out. Let's see where I need to hold stuff out. Well, it's mainly the red stuff here, isn't it? Um, even even that one there as well. So we've got the the hole in the strap that I want to take out, but we need to keep this area in for the red toggle. Okay, good, good, good. Well, let's um, again not overthink this. I'll create my first shape and let's track this one in because we don't we can't really use the uh, the body track again. So let's just track in the helmet. And on this one, let's just use the Mocha Tracker. Uh, translation scale rotation. Yes, let's do that. Let's turn off the stabilize in the viewer. And let's track that backwards, see what happens. Okay, looking good, looking fine. Move that to where we start and track forwards. And you'll notice that Silhouette has created a layer for us because I was too uh, efficient to uh, to create one for us there. Uh, so let's come in and we'll make a little shape here. Get this one held in. Come back to my reshape brush. Uh, let's stabilize the viewer around the helmet, shall we? Helmet track. Just makes things a lot easier for us. Uh, I know this isn't exactly point to point matching but we don't need it to because we're just doing rough shapes just to help us with our key so i can be a lot more fast and loose with these shapes than i would be if i was doing actual roto work there you go proper fast and loose on that all right let's see what that's done to our alpha channel hit a let's see if it's filling in all the bits that we need it to fill in at that point yes it is okay let's do some rough shapes in here as well just in case because we're going to be doing some nice big paint work there okay and these can be big and ugly as sin so long as they are holding in the helmet breaking all my normal roto rules i love it okay let's take a little look let's see how that now is going to play back without the overlays so hit zero on the number pad and just play that through looking fine the only thing i need to do is just maybe add another shape in over on the left hand side so now i've got a good mask around the uh, the helmet excellent Let's feather that up a little bit, shall we? Come in here. Let's go to our Z mat now. Do a little bit of a blur. Come into our holdout, blur that up as well. What about our garbage mask? Let's add a blur onto, across that as well. Just want to take out any sort of hard, distracting edges. Ooh, look at that. Need to fill that in now. Okay, new shape it is. Oh, do you know what would really help if I put it in the uh, the helmet track layer? Let's do that. I'll redo it. Hey, that's better. 
Oh yeah, that should be filled in, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, excellent. So we've now got our in-paint over on this side, which is doing most of the work. We've got over on this side, an alpha channel that is excluding the helmet based off of the Z Mac here, plus holdout and garbage mask shapes. And now we're gonna pump everything in to this paint node. And we're gonna tidy up the last little bits that are seeping through on this shirt. But that's gonna be in the next section. So let's uh, stop down, take a little bit of a break and congratulate ourselves on the good work that we have done so far. All right, I'll see you back in just a moment then. Thanks for joining me so far. We have hours of other silhouette training available now at the Boris FX website. And if you want to download a free trial version of Silhouette or any of the Boris FX products, simply head on over to borisfx.com.